Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefined Horizons, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through the preparation of a transmittal letter for a project that I'm working on in Tracy, California. So I'm helping a buddy of mine manage this uh, lot line adjustment uh, that we're doing in Tracy, and uh, it's okay if you don't know what that is. Uh, lot line adjustment is just a process to move a lot line. And so we're doing that for a couple existing commercial parcels in, in Tracy. And so one of the things I try and teach my team is uh, anytime we're making a submittal to a public agency, uh, I try and do that with a transmittal letter. I guess anytime is a strong word. Um, occasionally you get into some kind of informal back and forth uh, with a reviewer at an agency. And, uh, you know, you're just making very small changes, a couple of very small changes or minor changes. Um, I don't always do a transmittal letter for that stuff, but anytime I'm making a, an initial submittal or responding to a major set of review comments, uh, I try and always do that with a, with a transmittal letter. And there, there's a couple of reasons why I do that. Number one, I just think it's professional. Um, it's just a good professional practice. Um, it's uh, good communication. Um, the second reason is it, it really shows respect for the person that's reviewing your survey work product or your land planning work product. And, you know, I'm not always happy with the, <laughs> with the way the map review process works or even with the way the land development process works in California. If you, if you know me very well, you know, sometimes I get very frustrated with that process. But uh, at the end of the day, the, the people on the other uh, side of that process are just people, and they're just trying to do a job. And so, uh, you know, you want to respect them, and you want to respect their time. And uh, a transmittal letter gives you an opportunity to do that. So uh, we've got this slot line adjustment application going in, and uh, it's the first submittal of this application. It's going over to the city of Tracy. So I just want to walk you through real quick uh, what we put in the letter. So this is basically our template for the transmittal letter. And uh, we use this for a lot of different stuff, not just lot line adjustment applications. So a letter like this would go in with a tentative parcel map. It might go in with a uh, with the first submittal of an elevation certificate or a record survey map or a parcel map or a subdivision map, um, a LOMA, LOMAR, um, you know, all kinds of stuff that, that we deal with as land surveyors and land planners um, kind of on the private development side. So uh, I always, uh, or I shouldn't say always, but I typically start my letter the same way. So I'm going to say, uh, so to whom it may concern, because I don't know who this will be assigned to at the planning department. Please find enclosed with this uh, letter a copy of uh, our application for a lot line. adjustment in the city of Tracy. I'm going to say for a lot line adjustment of parcels in the city of Tracy. Um, and then uh, right away in the letter I want to do two things. Um, I want to let them know uh, what property we're talking about and I also want to let them know what is in the application package. Okay, So let's do that. So we're going to say the subject parcels for which the lot line adjustment application was prepared are identified as and then I'm going to just give them a little bullet list because I think it's a little easier to read. So we've got two parcels here. We've got uh, 3480 and 3460, I believe. So we're going to say 3460, uh, Nagley Road, Tracy, California, and 3480. Nagley Road, Tracy, California, and we just got to fix that font. It has to do with my bullets. Yeah, it's going to fight me. Microsoft Word is one of my most hated programs. 
Uh, looks like it's too small now, too. That needs to be 12. Okay, and what I like to do for the planner is just put the APN behind that because I already know there's trouble. They have trouble with the street addresses at this particular site and uh, and land planners like APNs. So let's see if we can find that here in our folder. Uh, nope, I did not put it in there because I'm slacking. So let me pause the video and I'll grab. All right, sorry about that, guys. So uh, I'm going to paste in the APN here. Now this is a little bit interesting. Uh, these two addresses, street addresses, have the same APN. That happens sometimes, and uh, you're going to see that we're going to talk about that uh, in just a minute in the letter. But all right, so now the land planner at the the city is going to know which uh, two parcels we're talking about. I don't need this extra white space either. Okay, so then I said the next thing we want to do is let them know what's in the application package. So we're going to say our application package includes the following items. Okay, so then we're going to let them know what items we got. I'm going to do a numbered list here. So we're going to say, what do we have? We have the city of Tracy general planning application signed by the parcel let me just say signed by the landowner and we're going to say the lot line adjustment sketch showing the existing parcel boundaries existing Existing easements, existing utilities, proposed parcel boundaries, and proposed easements. Okay, and then we're going to say the uh, land description packages written land descriptions for the post adjustment parcels these are signed and sealed by a land surveyor licensed to practice in the state of California So that's basically the three things they're getting. Oh, one more very important thing. A check for the lot line adjustment application review fee. So they want to get paid just like everybody else. Okay. Now, if this was simple, <laughs> that would uh, be the end of it. Uh, but it's not simple. So, um, you know, I want to try and make this job as easy as I can for these folks. So. Uh, one tricky issue we have here is there's a single APN, but there's three fee parcels. And so that's going to really mess up the land planner, probably. Um, and that may ultimately be something i got to deal with the, the city surveyor about. So, But I'm just going to put a note in here. So I'm just going to say, nope. The subject parcels are covered by a single tax assessor parcel number. But we believe based on our land title and survey research that there are three existing fee parcels that underlay this tax assessor parcel. Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to break this up because that's kind of a run-on sentence. I'm going to say they're covered by a single parcel. And I'm going to say, however, we believe, based on our land title and survey research, that there are three existing fee parcels that underlay this tax assessor parcel. Okay, I'm going to say uh, one of these parcels was created by PMXX-XXX 
Another was created by pmxx-xxx. We'll fill that in. And the final parcel was created by D. Our proposal is to merge these parcels into two parcels. <clears throat> Adjust the location of the lot line shared by the existing the by, excuse me by the proposed parcels to fit existing site improvements. Okay? So just kind of giving them a snapshot. Here's what we're trying to do. They're going to have a hard time with this because when they see 1 APN, they're going to tell me I got to do subdivision. Uh, but I don't have to do subdivision because I have two mapped lots and one lot created by deed. Uh, if I'm starting with two mapped lots and I'm ending with two mapped lots, I should be able to do a lot line adjustment. So um, they're probably going to kick this back anyways, uh, which is why uh, we have a land attorney on board. But um, I'm going to try and get ahead of them and just say, hey, I can do this. Um, I've got two map parcels, so we're just going to drop that note note in there and hopefully uh, avoid some confusion. You know, that's a pretty deep technical issue that that a junior uh, junior counter uh, junior planner at the counter may not understand. You know, first person that looks at this application may not understand that. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to say, uh, yeah, let's say please note. And then I'm going to say, please also note I'm going to say, we understand that uh, new easements will need to be created as part of the approval process for this lot line adjustment. We've shown the approximate location of the proposed joint access easement, joint access and utility easement on our lot line adjustment sketch. Okay, so let's just review. What are we doing here? We're giving them a lot line adjustment application. For which parcels? For these two parcels right here, these two addresses with the same APN, what's in our application? Uh, what's in our application is their planning application signed by the owner, the law line adjustment sketch, the land description packages signed by a land surveyor, and their check for the review fee. I want them to note we got some funky stuff happening here. Uh, just giving them a heads up. And hey, we also know that we're going to have to do some easements. We understand that. Okay. All right, so we're going to pull this over here. Let's go get those parcel map numbers. So our parcels are shown on, I think it's 17160. And I believe it's 2112. Yeah. And I'm not going to provide those maps at this point because um, I don't know how far we're going to get with this. Uh, they may just immediately kick this back and ask for a uh, for a, a parcel map, subdivision map. Uh, but I will certainly provide these maps if they're requested. But I, I don't want to I don't want to confuse the planning staff at the counter uh, any more than absolutely necessary. So I'm happy to provide that, but uh, I'm not going to do it just yet. Just let them get through our application. Okay, so that's the letter. I'll go ahead and sign this. Hopefully that helps you guys. Um, like I said, I believe it's professional and courteous to uh, provide a transmittal letter with all the major submittals that you make to a public agency. And I just want to give you guys an example of what that should look like. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Hey, guys, I just wanted to add a little postscript to this video. Uh, you can tell I'm tired because <laughs> uh, I forgot something really important. I just like to put a a little polite conclusion on my letter. Um, so I'll usually say something like, uh, 
We appreciate you taking the time to review our application. We look forward to receiving your review comments. Please contact us using the information in the signatures below with any questions. That's just a nice little note to add on the end there. Uh, it doesn't hurt to be polite. So I just wanted to, to add that to the video. It's an important, uh, important finishing touch that I forgot to add.